flag. Check. Shirts. Check. Merch. Check. Six point body pack. Let's, Let's roll. roll. Hey guys, it's Andy. I'm in the car with Jason and John hey. doing the film work. We are on our way to Blade Show, and we thought we'd just maybe shoot a little bit and have a little bit of a conversation. Who are you looking forward to most at the show? Uh, you know, to be honest, I always love to go see the um, uh, CRKT. Always has a great booth. They bring, uh, yo, that's true. They bring a ton of stuff. They let you get hands on with it. It is there, so you can like literally pull it off and 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 play with it. And uh, I. CRKT is one of my faves. I will, of course, go see Zero Tolerance. Kershaw. Kershaw. Yep. Those, yes, three, those three, for sure. I'll yeah. be visiting Spyderco. For sure. Every time. For I've got to sure. go check them out. You know, Spyderco sits in that corner, and it is, like, crazy busy and just jam-packed. And I think they have, like, just a 10-foot space, which is insane for the following that Spyderco has, right? And really, you know, the other booth that I look forward to, and this is... This is senseless self-promotion. I enjoy watching the Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Uh, yeah, when it gets like five to ten deep, it's middle a, of the day on Saturday. I had like, time. Boom, boom, boom. I want to stand on the box at the back and auction stuff. Well, it's who'll give me five dollars for this knife? Five dollars <laughs> this knife? Who's ten? Ten? Twenty? Twenty dollars? Twenty dollars? Thirty dollars for these two knives? Sold. It but, would be amazing. Well, you remember crazily last year when we had to go round up more T-shirts to bring them back to the front <laughs> or go out on the stage? You get in behind the counter and then you are completely. Uh, stuck there because you were servicing the next customer that walks up. How many Essie knives did I sell last I, year? Every time we went over there to grab more swag, to grab more t-shirts, you got stuck behind that counter going, Jason, come on. And I was like, come no, on. I'm selling a come knife. On. Shut up. It's fun to go rum, uh, rummage around the uh, maker's tables. Oh, I, I spent hours last year yeah, just roaming table to table looking at anything from somebody who'd done custom work on a manufactured knife people who were actually you know from tip to tip making their own blades and it was just the variety the passion and the uh, really the imagination yeah, that went into could, them you could one second be talking to somebody who was from ukraine next yes, moment you're yes. turning around and you're talking to somebody through a translator who's from japan i mean yeah. insane absolutely insane and if you want to learn about knife making um, handle materials, blade materials, and you are fresh to becoming a, a knife nerd, a knife enthusiast, a, a person who digs knives, there's really no better place to go because if you start some of these folks talking, just grab a chair because you're going to be there for a while. What would you suggest that somebody pick as their very first knife? What is your thought? Wow. Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a tough one. Um, are they... Getting a knife primarily to as an everyday carry, at everyday carry. Let's let's keep it out of the specialty field. So let's okay, say, no, let's that, not that's say good. that we're that they're not hunting with it. They're not uh, going out for bushcraft or survival. They just need an EDC to go in their pocket every day. I'm going to throw two out. Okay, uh, mainly because I think it depends on the the style of knife they're wanting to to dig on at the time. Right. Um, I would probably go with a traditional stockman. Okay. Um, maybe even a, maybe even the medium or the mini stockman. Right. Uh, you have multiple blades. Right. It's slip joint. Um, you know, there's it, it, there's nothing fancy about them, but you can also go as elaborate as you wanted to with that. Right. Um, it's not as large as a trapper, so it's going to sit in your pocket in the, in the bottom of a jeans pocket in particular. It's going to sit well underneath change or whatever, um, and you can. With that Stockman, you can go from a 9.99 Rough Rider all the way to a you know a mother of pearl handle case right. for 80 or 90 bucks. Yeah, and have whatever feel or finish you want to it. Right. Um, on the other end, if it's me, I'm probably going CRKT with something with a pocket clip, which is yeah. what I would aim for. Or right. or I'm going to aim for a Kershaw with uh, assisted opening. I would have put that in the CRKT. I would have put it in CRKT too. 
mainly because the expense is there, right? So exactly. you're talking 30 to 50 bucks yep. for a really, really nice knife. I probably would have gone Kershaw as well. But unlike you, I probably wouldn't put them in a traditional pocket knife, and here's why. I want them to be completely addicted to this knife that is going in their pocket. And I think that while yep. I love the look of a Stockman, I love the feel of a Stockman, I love the tradition of a Stockman. Sure. Uh, getting a Stockman out and playing with it blade by blade is just, it's not nearly as fun as popping out your Kershaw chive and going, Tch, Okay, close. See, but you're, Tch, close. you're arguing for the action gasm, and while I'm completely there with you <laughs> do all Do you know that, I coined that phrase and you use it more than I do? I, well, because I dig it. <laughs> and I think we should hashtag all the episodes yes. where I say hashtag. action gasm. Yes. Hashtag action gasm. Um, <laughs> I'm going for the addiction. I want them to have and, fun with it and, and be I agree. completely addicted to knives. But for some people, depending on their trade, depending on their profession, that clip on their pants pocket True. isn't going to be as good for them or as... It's not going to be as well felt by the rest of their colleagues. So, if they're... Let's say they're in business attire every day at work. Right. That stockman, down in the pants pocket... Is still a functional, good, carryable, everyday use knife. That's why I said both. Yeah. Um, for me, I'm going to go for that that tactical folder because that's more my style. It's what I wear most of the time. It's what I have on me most of the time. That being said, so question. Bigger. A lot of times now, that cotton sale is in my pocket. <laughs> right, right. But big or small, on that on that on that modern folder, on that flipper, on that uh, big or small. Because for me, I'm going to say chive. I'm going to say start off small. Yeah. It's fast. It's fun. Sure. It is great in the pocket. You know it's a Kershaw, yeah. so it's going to last. It's going to be around forever. But I you mean, know, small. or you go for that small line M16 style CRKT with a flipper. I, I don't think I would hand somebody a CRKT M16 first. I, to me, that's a harder knife. To, it's not a flipper, right? Because most of your M16s are thumb stud opening. Yeah, but they've got a flipper on the back. Do they? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, the original one did for sure. Hmm. And, I, and a lot of the newer ones do. Okay. So maybe I'm wrong about that. But I don't think I would go for anything that was hard to operate. No, I, and again, I think it. the bad thing is you and I have both been around these for so long, it's hard to take yourself out and go, okay, first use. But I think you might be right. I mean, there, there is something about that ease of opening with a Kershaw, with that chive. Right. Um, I mean, again, I've had my chive for almost 20 years yeah, now. Yeah, me too. And... I've worn the finish off of it. Right. But it is still just as usable, just as sharp right, right now as it was the day I bought it. Right. Um, and again, it's not that big. Right. It's, and it's a good, sensible pocket knife. If you wanted to go bigger, maybe try something in a, in a CRKT Pilar or something like that. Sure. With the rasp? That's a, that's a little big. It's a little big. And I would, I would right. dissuade anybody from jumping into their first... And let's stick with tactical folder because, again, they, that's kind of what we're both into right now. Right. I would dissuade going with anything too big. I would dissuade going from anything too expensive. I mean, uh, no, flat oh, completely. Out, flat out, completely. Right? Completely. So I would maybe jump into a Kaiser, maybe jump into an Artisan, maybe jump into a Rake. A Rake, yeah, for yeah. sure. Maybe jump into a Kershaw, uh, any of those at that level of CRKT, and just try it out. See what you like. Find the pattern that feels good. That's what I would say to people. But again, I want people to fall in love with just playing with it. Well, because, it's, I mean, it's, that, there's something about making that knife click, making this uh, that noise, just sitting there playing with that knife that is, I mean, there's nothing better than and that. And I tell you, it's what I enjoyed about Blade Show the most last year. You think people driving by are like, he's going to cut him? <laughs> They think that I have been abducted. <laughs> and he's filming it all. Look at that. <laughs> There's somebody in the We're going to witness a murder um, <laughs> on the way to Georgia. Is it ironic he has a blade going to Blade Show? Squeal like a big boy. <laughs> <laughs> that's a different movie. Yeah, it is. But um, still filmed in Georgia, right? Uh, that, that's true. Yeah. Uh, up on the Ocoee, I think. Yeah. Um, <coughs> because we can't do one of these without a movie reference. Bingo. <laughs> We really ought to ask somebody to start a blog somewhere or a listing somewhere of yeah. the movie references yeah. <laughs> with IMDb links right. back to the movies. Um, but it's the reason why I enjoyed Blade Show so much last year was all the vendors that are there, you can pick them up and hold them. Oh, One yeah. of the neatest displays I saw last we year. We suggest that you pick up and hold the knives rather than picking up the vendors and holding them. They frown you upon can, that just a little they bit. They don't. It depends. You should have seen the lotus By spin Sunday? that just popped out of my mouth and went into the air in the sun <laughs> back here. I mean, that was like, bing! 
all the Just way so you know, by Sunday, the vendors don't care. You can hold them, too. Okay. So what did we decide? We decided that Blade Show is great for uh, any booth you really want to go to, but I'm yes. going to CRKT for sure. You're going to Spider Co. for sure. Um, of course, I'll hit the Kershaw booth. We talked about what knife to first get, uh, and for me, it's a it's a flipper folder of some sort, maybe Kershaw, maybe CRKT on the smaller side. Jason, you were a medium stockman, yeah. and, uh, and, then and then back Kershaw to CRKT well. Kershaw as well. So I mean, I think we covered a few things here that you might want to look into in the store. Go to SMKW. Uh, 18,000 products online every day. Make sure you're subscribing. That's that red button. It's right down there. Make sure you're hitting the notification bell. It's up here. Ding, ding. Hit that. Find that. Jason's up there laughing at me. John's snickering as well. Uh, we are in the car on the way to Blade Show. I'm sure we'll do many more of these that you'll see. But uh, guys, we'll catch you next time on Guys Talk Knives at SMKW.com.